Namaste. So my name is Lorna Vanderhaeg. I'm a women's natural health expert, but way back in 1998, my very first book that I wrote was called The Immune System Cure. And I wrote that book when we really did not know a lot about the immune system. We were just starting to really understand about things like HIV and AIDS, and we didn't know that allergies were caused by our immune system. So since then, there's been a lot of changes in the immune system. Uh, then the next book I wrote was called Healthy Immunity, which was a gigantic Bible on all the different immune conditions. So if you find those books, they're you know, out of print now, but you can probably find some of them on Amazon as well. I also have a degree in biochemistry. I also have a nutrition degree and I've been researching and writing on nutritional medicine for about 35 years. So I'm, I'm going to go over a lot of information. I'm not going to get into how every T cell and B cell works because the immune system's just too complicated. So what we're going to talk about tonight that we know, we know the immune system is our internal army. It is literally on constant surveillance, seeking, recognizing, and destroying invaders every second of every day. And we have the ability to keep our immune system nice and strong through diet, our emotions, which is very interesting work going on right now, how they affect our immune system, uh, nutrients and lifestyle. So I'm gonna talk about all of those things and how they affect your immune system. And the great news is you can really do a great job getting your immune system back into balance utilizing those lifestyle changes. We're gonna talk about what to do to prevent viral infections. Of course, right now we're in the midst of a pandemic. So there's a lot of concerns about how do we prevent? How do we treat? What do we do for ourselves if we get sick? And I'm gonna talk about autoimmune diseases because autoimmune diseases are on the rise. And that is when the immune system gets confused. And instead of attacking a virus, it turns and attacks your body's own tissues and they can be extremely um, severe. So what are the signs of immune dysfunction? How do you know if you've got an immune system problem? Well, if you're getting frequent colds and flus or viral infections, if you get herpes outbreaks, so that's cold sores. Um, if you have allergies, that is an overactive immune system. If you're that person who's chronically wiping your nose, you have an overactive immune system. Autoimmune diseases, which are things like MS and lupus and type one diabetes, those are an overactive immune system. Candida yeast infections, so those could be vaginal infections, athlete's foot, those things are telling you that your immune system is not working properly. Lots of painful swollen joints, psoriasis, eczema, and other skin conditions, inflammatory disorders. And I'm gonna talk a lot about inflammation because that is all rooted in our immune system. HPV warts, which we see on the genitals, the throat and the skin, even ADHD in kids, recurring miscarriages and infertility in some women and Alzheimer's disease, memory problems and depression. So all of those things are telling us that there's really something not right with our immune system. So this important system, this internal army, why is it letting us down? Why is it not doing its job the way it's supposed to? Well, a big part of that is inadequate nutrition. We just are not eating foods that are going to support a healthy immune system and lots of other systems in the body as well. We have antibiotic overuse and abuse. So, you know, using antibiotics for viral infections instead of what they're designed for, which is bacterial infections. A toxic overload. We're talking about environmental pollution, pesticides. These things, you know, the body can only take so much. And if we're exposed to all of these things over and over and over again, then of course our immune system topples over. Our emotional status, stress, anger, and I'm gonna talk about emotions and how they affect the immune system. And of course, then we just have super virulent viruses and bacteria that are out there. And of course, cancer cells that are overrun. And you know, when we look at things like environmental pollution, our children receive 35% of their entire lifetime toxic load of environmental pollutants by the time they're five. 
Uh, one in six bacterial infections are antibiotic resistant, and that is because we keep using antibiotics uh, to treat viral infections when we don't need them. And then I found out something very interesting that tons of these two antibiotics, streptomycin and tetracycline, are sprayed on the fruits, particularly fruits that we eat, which are creating bacterial resistance to drugs, to, to um, the antibiotics that we use. And we are too clean. We should be loving dirt. And when I talk about how the immune system develops, you'll understand why the man who wrote the book, Just Eat Dirt, was bang on when it came to our immune system. So it seems that the more pets you have when your baby is little, and the more exposure we have to the exterior environment, so dirt, the better things are for the immune system. So here's a little diagram of the body so you can understand where your immune system is. And the skin is the largest immune organ. It has its own host of little bacteria, good ones, that are protecting us. And of course, it's protecting us from things getting into the body. So when you start to have all kinds of skin conditions, that's telling you that your immune system has definitely got some challenges going on. Your thymus, it sits right behind that little curved breastbone in the center of your chest. And many, many years ago, when I was a baby, uh, they, they would, when, our, when a baby is born, their thymus is huge. And doctors thought that was a bad thing. They used to radiate thymuses in infants because they thought it was a bad thing that it was big. We now know that our thymus is huge when we're born, and that's because our immune system is just developing. And it is such an important uh, gland in the body because it's where our T cells are formed, which is really our internal cellular army. Then we have our tonsils and our adenoids. We have our spleen, lymph glands. We know what they are because sometimes they get swollen in our neck when we're sick or under our armpit or maybe in our groin. Uh, by the way, lymph, only moves through the body if you move. So jumping up and down is a great thing to do for your immune system. And pounding that little curved spot on that bone in the middle of your chest, you know, when Tarzan used to beat his chest, that pounding of that bone in your chest is a good thing. It actually stimulates your thymus gland, which is so important in your immune system. As we age, our thymus gland shrinks into this little walnut and no wonder our immune system doesn't work as well when we get old. Then our bone marrow is where our B cells, which create antibodies are produced. And so this is really your immune system. So it's a whole network of cells and organs and tissues that are constantly talking to one another. Then we have several types of immunity. We have passive immunity. This is what you're born with. So when a baby is born, they don't have a fully functioning immune system. They have to borrow some of the mom's immune system through antibodies that are received through the placenta and breast milk. And antibodies are those memory cells. And I'm gonna talk about those in a minute. And so when a baby is born, they don't have an immune system that is fully functioning. As they get each virus or bacteria or cold or flu, or they're exposed to dirt and lots of animals licking them and things like that, they develop an immune system. The immune system learns through being exposed to all kinds of things in our environment. Then we have a part of the immune system called our innate immunity, which I just talked about. And that involves your skin, your tears, your vaginal secretions, mucus. Remember, the immune system is all about keeping things out of the body. And so if you've noticed, you know, if you get a cold, the first thing that happens is your nose starts running and your eyes start running. And that's because the body's trying to create a lot of fluid to push out the invader. And that part of the immune system contains really interesting cells. One of them we call a macrophage. It's basically a big eating cell and it engulfs invaders and de destroys, basically eats them up and digest them. And this is to make sure things can't get into the body. Then we have this acquired immunity. And basically what acquired immunity is, is this is the type of immunity that develops through exposure. So when, if you got measles as a kid, you were exposed to it, your body said, oh, that's not bad. Your immune system created antibodies 
and you never get measles again. And the same thing with mumps. Maybe you got mumps as a child, especially my age generation. We got all of those things, measles, mumps, chicken pox. And uh, if we got them, you create lifelong immunity. Your immune system creates antibodies and you never get that condition again. Vaccines work on a similar kind of premise. We introduce an agent, a much weaker agent, and then the body produces antibodies. And some vaccines work to give you lifelong immunity and others do not. They wear out or they expire. You know, for example, if you got the mumps vaccine now, it may only last you eight or 10 years. But if you've got mumps, you get lifelong immunity. And this kind of immunity remembers everywhere in the body. So it doesn't matter where you get infected with something, this type of immunity is instant and starts creating tons of antibodies to kill everything. Then we have cellular immunity. So if, if something gets past the skin and gets through all these other and ends up actually in a cell, then we have these little tiny warriors and we have millions and millions of them, things like T cells and killer cells and helper T cells, and they raise the alarm and they kill everything in the cell and they kill the cell as well. And of course, these are utilized in cancer treatments too. Then I've got an image of a macrophage. So these cells are really interesting. They're big and they're fat and they literally roll over and engulf and digest invaders, particularly bacteria and viruses. And one teaspoon of white sugar shuts off these immune cells for five hours. So when we talk about what we can do for our immune system and protect us from viruses, Literally, not eating sugar is probably the most important thing you can do to protect your body from these um, invaders getting in. Now, I'm going to talk about inflammation because this is another uh, mechanism the immune system uses to protect us against injury or invaders. So, inflammation is the immune system's first response against injury or invaders. So things like this, you slip and fall on the ice and you sprain your ankle. It's going to get red, hot, painful, and swollen. And all of those symptoms are your immune system sending immune invaders into that area, immune messengers into that area to clean it up, fix it, stop the problem. And it also causes pain, which forces you to sit down and put your foot up and maybe put ice on it. It's all a process used to repair damage. And literally it's good because if you didn't have that type of inflammation, then bad things could happen in the body and you wouldn't know. And short term, it's needed to destroy invaders, to clean things up that got damaged and to repair the damage and close over the skin if you had a cut. And so it's good in the short term. Inflammation can also occur where there is no infection or no injury, and we call this auto-inflammation. So this kind of inflammation is dangerous, and chronic inflammation that you have continually and long-term can, can cause all kinds of really serious problems in the body, like joint pain, joint destruction, tissue damage, and it can happen all over the body, things in the heart, the brain, the gut, the immune system just creates this huge inflammatory response. And we now know that inflammation is very, very dangerous when it is out of control and runs unchecked. So it's not the short-term inflammation that the immune system needs to fix a cut on your skin, but it is the long-term inflammation that we're now realizing is so dangerous. And so what happens, really we're calling it inflammation gone bad. And the, the little term at the end of words, the itis. So itis means inflammation and you get arthritis, cystitis, myocarditis, which we've heard a lot of lately, especially around the COVID vaccine. That's inflammation around the myo um, uh, layer on the heart, bursitis, gastritis, meningitis, bronchitis, colitis, sinusitis. So all of those, whenever you see the little term at the end, itis, that means inflammation. And we now know with heart disease that 50% of people who have a heart attack 
have a normal cholesterol and normal blood pressure, they are having problems due to excessive inflammation in the body. We know that people with gingivitis, so that's gum inflammation, are almost five times more likely to have heart disease. And we just have this huge number of conditions that are really rooted in too much inflammation. So all of this is about our immune system just running on hyperdrive. And we really have to have a balanced immune system in order for it to do its job of keeping us um, protected. So what is autoimmunity? This is when the immune system, instead of attacking an invader, it turns on the body and attacks itself. So the immune system literally, instead of attacking a virus or a bacteria, it attacks the body and causes all kinds of tissue damage. And we can think about conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, where you end up with serious uh, destruction of body tissues. Nearly 80% of all autoimmune conditions are afflicted in women. So women have the highest number of autoimmune conditions. They think there's a hormone connection. They have yet been able to determine exactly what that is. And autoimmune conditions can be mild to very, very damaging. Things like vitiligo, where the skin goes white, would be classified as a mild autoimmune condition, although it's quite disfiguring and the people who have it probably wouldn't believe that, to very damaging like multiple sclerosis, lupus, and uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And why do we get those things? Well, there's this belief that maybe you had a virus or a bacteria earlier and the immune system killed off that virus or bacteria, but the immune system still thinks it's present. So you might've had a virus, but now the immune system thinks some tissue in the body still looks like the virus and goes after it and destroys it. And you know, we know the immune system is quite voracious when it is trying to uh, destroy things. Genetics is one component, but it's definitely not uh, the main reason because you could have the genes or the family history for a condition and never develop that particular autoimmune condition. We also think leaky gut, that's where undigested food particles are leaking through your gut lining and ending up in your bloodstream are initiating it, especially in arthritis and toxic pesticide overload where the body just cannot handle any more poisons or toxins as well. So those are just some of the reasons, but ultimately it's an incredibly damaging uh, form of immune response. And that's really not what we want. What we want to have is this balanced kind of immune system. So you literally have these two sides of the immune system. One side is fighting viruses and cancer, and the other side is involved in inflammation and autoimmune disorders. And what we have learned over the last few decades is stress, especially cortisol, the stress hormone, toxins and environmental factors, and of course, poor nutrition and a whole host of emotional issues are all causing our immune system to become overactive. And when that overactive arm increases and cortisol goes up, something bad happens on the other side of the immune system. DHEA, which is a very important anti-aging hormone, and really a, a messenger for the whole body, that DHEA hormone drops. And when cortisol goes up, we end up with autoimmune disorders, chronic inflammation, arthritis, allergies, fibromyalgia. On the other side, we see DHEA and immune cell function drop. And then the body cannot fight cancer. It doesn't fight colds, flus, um, it ends up with things like warts and herpes and lots of viral infections, heart disease, and increased aging. So when cortisol goes up and DHEA drops, you end up with this immune system that literally cannot fight viruses and bacteria very well. And we want to have this balance equals health. We want to have our immune system so that it's fighting and destroying viruses and bacteria and cancer cells. And we want it to be doing inflammation, but just enough to kill off the bad guys and not enough to cause disease. So this is where 
you will never hear me say, let's boost our immune system. Boosting the immune system increases inflammation and creates a potential for autoimmune diseases. So we really have to um, get that immune system in balance. And that's what I'm going to talk about how we're going to fix all of this. So the first thing is 70% of your immune system sits in your gut. And the microbiota, so the good guys, you have this whole army of bacteria in your gut that we call our microbiome that contain this microbiota. The gut and the immune system talk to each other. And it makes sense because a lot of the invaders that come into the body, we eat them. And vegetable fibers, so we've we have to eat more fruits and vegetables. I always say this in every one of my talks. And every time I do research for a new talk, I go, you are absolutely right. We need to eat more fruits and vegetables. Why? Because vegetable fiber provides prebiotics, which are food for the good guys, the probiotics in your digestive system. And the probiotics, probiotic foods are essential. So that's where you want to eat things like yogurt and kimchi and sauerkraut and all the fermented foods. And in the next decade, we're just going to see a whole host of new fermented products come onto the marketplace. They believe it's going to be the number one category. The second thing is, are you happy? You know, we ask people all the time, how are you? Are you? And, you know, we'll say we're fine. But really, what we should be asking people is, are you happy? Because 95% of your happy hormone serotonin is made in your gut. And what we've now learned is that negative emotions, things like anger, fear, disgust, shame, and sadness have been shown to increase inflammation in the body and can even lead to chronic pain. So you rack up your inflammation and what you end up getting in the body ultimately long-term is pain and destruction. Unresolved negative emotions can cause immunological disturbances, which we've just talked about them all, and a weak immune system. And if this goes on long enough, you end up with illness and chronic disease. So it's important that we deal with our emotional status as well if we wanna have a healthy immune system. Uh, sleep equals strong immunity. So while we're sleeping, the immune system makes antibodies to remember invaders. And while we're sleeping, our cortisol goes down. So when cortisol goes down, your DHEA goes up and the immune system is really in a happy status. So what do we do to get all of this fixed? And I'm gonna talk about nutritional supplements because I really want you to eat at least five cups of fruits and vegetables a day. And if you just focus on adding five cups of organic, so you're not getting all those pesticides, fruits and vegetables every day, you will be shocked at what happens in the body. And then also looking at, you know, how can I make myself happy? How can I have more joy in my life? And then sleeping, making it a priority to go to bed at 10 o'clock at night and doing everything you can to have deep restful sleep. And then I'm going to talk about the nutritional supplements that have been clinically researched for the immune system specifically. And when I wrote my first book back in 1998, I was fortunate to be able to go to South Africa, meet the researchers who had been already doing a tremendous amount of clinical studies using an ingredient called Modicare. And this is a combination of plant sterols and sterolin. So two very unique plant sterols, not the ones we use for cholesterol lowering, but beta cytosterol and beta cytosterolin in this really unique combo of 100 to 1. And it has been researched for the immune system. So they have over 25 years of clinical research. And Modicare works specifically to balance the immune system. And when we talk about balancing the immune system, we, you'll see the word modulates or modulating. So in music, that means, you know, the tone, but in the body, it means keeping that seesaw of your immune system nicely balanced. It controls destructive inflammation. It lowers cortisol. It increases DHEA. It controls allergies. And I'm going to talk about some of these studies that have been done. It helps you battle infections. 
And the interesting thing is they have done research in the worst infections like HPV, um, as well as things like hepatitis C. And now they have also done research, cellular research, looking at COVID and of course HPV and herpes. So I'm gonna talk about that. The early, early work using Modicare was in men who had benign prostatic hypertrophy, which we call BPH, which is an enlarged prostate, and research in arthritis, particularly rheumatoid arthritis, and marathon runners. And why marathon runners? Because anyone who overexercises causes a massive amount of inflammation in the body. And those people tend to get lots of colds and flu after they work out. We also see this in bodybuilders. Uh, one of the things with these plant sterols, they compete with cholesterol. So we want, we want to take them in this encapsulated form so that we can get more of them. And I always love to talk about products that have really good clinical studies because that is what is so special is when um, the developer of something decides that they really want to prove to people that their ingredients work. So Modicare for allergies, there's a new study where they looked at kids who had allergies and it was a six month long study. And what they found, and this is important that we actually study products in certain populations. So I love that they've done studies in kids and they found a reduction in nasal obstruction, sneezing, itching, runny nose, the increase in the amount of air that they could blow out or take in. And 13 out of the 30 kids in this study had a reduction in immune markers that we measure for allergies. So that was exciting as well. And this was done in Greece. And Modicare is available in a grape chewable. So kids really like that. Well, I prefer to take it in the grape chewable as well. It's sweetened with xylitol, so it's good for your teeth. And if the child doesn't like the chewable, then you just open the capsule and dump it into their food because it basically has no taste and it comes in two forms. And so does it work for adults as well? Yes. And remember, I have been involved with this product for a very long time now, since 1998. And so I've had a lot of actual use in people. So often we do clinical research and everybody is excited. And then you get these things out into the general population and they don't work as well as they did in the clinical studies. The cool thing about Modicare is that we have a lot of use in the population. So the general population has used it. You get tons of feedback. And I did a post on my social media at Lorna Vanderhaeg because I remembered when I was getting ready for this talk that people who have animal allergies, so to cats and dogs and horses, are able to get those allergies under control once they start taking Modicare. And Modicare is a daily immune supplement. It's not something that you take like an allergy pill. It's something that you would take every day to keep your immune system nice and strong. Uh, the research for Modicare in arthritis was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. There are over a hundred different types of arthritis. Uh, the research that was done with Modicare was done in the worst form, which is called rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune condition. And rheumatoid arthritis is so dramatic. It causes destruction of the joints and the immune system is so voracious that it will actually attack the joint until the joint is no longer stable. And then we end up with dislocation of the joint. So that's why they use some pretty heavy duty immunosuppressive drugs. And when you suppress the immune system with powerful drugs, you also shut off the immune system's ability to fight cancer. So a lot of people who are taking these very powerful drugs for shutting off their immune system for rheumatoid arthritis have increased risk of things like lymphoma and other cancers as a result. So, you know, we don't take it lightly when someone has to use those medications. So what they found in the clinical research with Modicare is that it controls the action of immune cells that literally these immune cells then stop the destruction. We stop the destruction of the joint. Um, also in the study, they always, when they do these kinds of studies, they always give people pain medication with Modicare and then one group just gets pain medication. 
So what they found in the group that was taking Modicare is they had a dramatic reduction in the number of anti-inflammatory over-the-counter medications they were using. They had a significant improvement in pain, swelling, and mobility. And people weren't as tired because when you have an autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis, you have a lot of fatigue. So when we stop all that inflammation, people have energy again. It also corrects the inflammatory response. They can measure things like interleukin-6, which is a very powerful inflammatory factor that is initiated in this whole process. And since 1998, Modicare has been used to treat arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis in North America with great success. So good clinical research here. And I wanted to show you what's really going on with arthritis. And arthritis doesn't start when you're 60. It actually occurs much earlier. We probably just only feel the pain when we finally destroyed our joint. So the one thing I wanna say as well, in the body, everything talks to each other. So if you have arthritis, you end up with your cartilage, which is like this two slippery ice cubes rubbing together. That's how nice cartilage is. It just rolls over each other. It starts to wear away. And then you have this fluid in the middle. I'll call it, it's called synovial fluid, but it's like bubble wrap. And then you have the capsule and the tendons and everything that holds your joint. Well, as you develop arthritis, you start to see the uh, cartilage starts to crack and break away and become thinner. And then it starts to really fall off there. And then you end up with bone rubbing on bone and the synovial fluid or the bubble wrap disappears and leaks away. And then the next thing you have is the bone is rubbing on bone. And then of course the body says, we better help fix that and creates all these little bony spurs all over the place. And by this time you're in terrible pain. Then we have rheumatoid arthritis that is so voracious. You, you end up with these nodes on your fingers. So if you've ever seen your grandma that has these great big knuckles and they're on both hands, generally with rheumatoid arthritis, you get this on both hands, both knees, both wrists but particularly the hands are a good indicator. And some people can get it in their feet as well. So we wanna stop this process. And that is the beauty of things like Modicare because they are able to stop this immune process that's going on in the body. Then we have research that they did using Modicare for the human papillomavirus. So we've heard a lot about HPV, it causes warts. It causes warts on the cervix and is linked to cervical cancer. We also see these on other genitals. It causes abnormal pap smears. You can get warts on your hands as well. Um, but they did a study in 123 patients. They had two groups. They generally get rid of these warts by using cryotherapy. Basically, they freeze them off. Uh, most of the treatments for treating HPV do not work. And it comes back and it comes back and it comes back. So they had two groups, one group just got cryotherapy, one group took Modicare and cryotherapy. And in this study, those taking Modicare along with the cryotherapy had an 80% reduction in lesions. And this was sustained for six months after the treatment. And the interesting thing about this study, I don't know if they did this on purpose, but the group, group getting Modicare with the cryotherapy actually had more HPV lesions to start off with than the group that just got cryotherapy. So knowing that standard treatments have a high failure rate and that we have a big problem with HPV induced um, abnormal pap smears and cervical cancer, uh, Modicare would be something that people should add to their daily diet, their daily nutritional program to help protect them from these things. And this was published in the Journal of Dermatological Treatment in 2015. There is a lot of research being done right now on ingredients, plants, herbs, vitamins, and minerals that can be used to work for SARS-CoV-2. And some of the researchers around the world have been looking at beta-cytosterol and beta-cytosterolin, which is found in Modicare. Uh, combined with the Modicare researchers who are also looking at this. And what they discovered is that these ingredients in Modicare are inhibitors of the spike protein. So you need that spike protein to actually get in there and attach to make 
um, SARS COVID uh, become a problem in the body. So this is directly lifted. And I'm so sorry about the construction noise behind me. Normally they're done at four o'clock. But from one of the studies that was done, they said, we have concluded that beta cytosterol can be used to enhance immunity against the SARS-CoV-2 infection, as well as restrict the viral invasion into the host cell through a certain enzyme, which stops the spike protein, which then will halt the virus from being able to do its job. And this one was published in the Archives of Pharmacology and Therapeutics in 2020. Um, they haven't done human clinicals yet, but it's interesting that many, many researchers around the world are, uh, fine, are doing this research, looking at deactivating that spike protein with the ingredients found in Modicare. So how does Modicare work in viral infections? Well, the original research was done in HIV AIDS, way back, and it inhibits the entry of HIV-1. It also increases the ability of the immune system uh, with natural killer cells and T cells. And, you know, HIV AIDS is a very serious viral infection. And the fact that Modicare has been used and many countries in Africa are using Modicare as an additional treatment in HIV AIDS Way back in 1997, they did a clinical trial using Modicare for tuberculosis, and they found an improvement in weight gain in people who were really suffering with TB and a significant improvement in immune cells. Uh, they also did research in cats. So cats get this feline immunovirus. Lots of people vaccinate their cats for this, but cats um, with this FIV, it's considered to be equal to HIV in humans. So they use cats to evaluate HIV, or they did way back then. And what they found in this study is that the cats treated with the Modicare were healthy and stable. And I remember from when I actually went to South Africa, how healthy the cats really were. This was not terrible research that you see being done on rats. Uh, these cats were beautiful. And sadly, the cats that were not treated declined, just like people who have HIV who are not treated don't do well either. Then they've done research in marathon runners where they showed a reduction in inflammation, a decrease in cortisol, that's that you know, stress hormone that we have too much of, and an increase in DHEA, which is a, a mother hormone or a protective hormone for the immune system, and an increase in good white blood cells of the immune system. Cancer. So there's lots of research as well that's been done in cells, cancer cells and animal studies for the breast, the colon, the prostate, fibrosarcomas, uterus, cervical cancers and larynx. So they have been using these ingredients, beta cytosterol and beta cytosterol in, in these cancer research. And what did they find? They found it caused the cancer cells to blow up. We call this, this word is called apoptosis. And literally what you wanna do is get your immune system recognizing that cancer and then blowing up the cells that have the cancer in them. They also found that these ingredients inhibit the proliferation of cancer cells. So we haven't had human research yet. You know, one thing we have to realize is that research is very expensive and nutritional supplement companies are not like drug companies. They can't get patents. They can't do all these things. So, um, you know, covering the cost of this kind of research. So it's interesting that we know that this happens in cell culture studies and animal studies, but here's the good news. It's been used in Canada and the US for 25 years. Well, all over the world, actually. And one of the things that you get when you have a product like this is a lot of feedback from people. And people have said they had improvement in mouse sores from chemotherapy. They had less chemotherapy side effects. Uh, people reported that when they took Modicare along with their chemotherapy, they had less hair loss, less nausea, and they fared better during their uh, cancer treatment. And I just think if you get your immune system strong, whatever treatment you decide to do, whether it be a drug for your rheumatoid arthritis, 
or a treatment for your cancer, you're going to have the help of your immune system, which its job is to fight these things for you. I'm gonna talk, so as you can tell, I really love Modge Care. And I've been talking about it for a very long time. Someone sent me a note saying, I haven't heard you talk about that before, but it's probably just because they missed me talking to someone about autoimmune diseases. The other reason why I love Modicare is because it is not an immune booster. And if you have an autoimmune disease or if you have a hyperinflammatory condition, you cannot take immune boosters. So anyone who's trying to sell you an immune product that says, oh, it's going to boost the immune system, you want to walk away from that because you've just learned that boosting your immune system can be a bad thing, especially considering the amount of high cortisol we have from stress, the more inflammatory factors we have, the more destruction that goes on in the body, and then our DHEA drops. We don't fight cancer and viruses as well. So Modicare is safe for people with autoimmune diseases. So which vitamins and minerals do you wanna take as well? And this is especially important right now because here we are, our kids are back at school. And even if we were not dealing with the current pandemic, when our kids go back to school, the whole family gets sick within the first three weeks. And that's because you're just exposed to so many more bugs. I'm about preventing disease. You know, it's so much easier to prevent things than it is to treat them once we get them. And some of the minerals like zinc and selenium are super immune stars. And so when you go to buy a multivitamin with minerals, make sure it's got a good dose of zinc in it. And 15 to 30 milligrams a day for adults is plenty. For kids, you know, even three to 10 milligrams in there is enough but it's an immune cell activator. It gets all those T cells and natural killer cells and gets them all working. It makes your thymus work better, you know? So pound your chest, take zinc. Uh, it normalizes inflammation. It is required for 300 enzyme systems in the body. And it's a powerful antibacterial and it works quickly. So it's very cheap. It's found on every supplement shelf, and I think it should be part of your daily immune program. Vitamin C. And you know, when I ask people, what do you take for your immune system? Everybody says vitamin C. And yet here is the latest stat. Only 9% of Canadians are getting adequate levels of vitamin C. So we're not taking enough and we're not getting enough. And vitamin C is so important it fights viruses it has a, it's a natural antihistamine it's anti-inflammatory it stops viruses from replicating it tells immune cells to destroy cancer it's a powerful anti-inflammatory it makes intracellular glutathione which is a powerful detoxifier in the body it's needed for healthy aging so as we age our immune system just doesn't work as well the interesting thing is when you give vaccines to old people, they don't even produce antibodies. If you gave them zinc and vitamin C and Modicare before they went and had their vaccine, they'd probably produce enough antibodies to be protected. So what are the best forms of vitamin C? Because there's a lot of vitamins that you know could be better. You want to pick the best form of vitamin C and I call those buffered vitamin C and they're buffered to stop stomach upset, to improve absorption. And so vitamin C is called ascorbate or ascorbic acid. When you buffer it, you add magnesium to it, magnesium ascorbate. It doesn't mean it's a magnesium supplement. It is not. It is a vitamin C supplement that has been bound to magnesium. So you want to look for things like magnesium ascorbate, potassium ascorbate and calcium ascorbate, and you want a thousand milligrams three times a day. That would be the best scenario. So buffered vitamin C is so good for us. And again, I'm going to say it just because it has the word magnesium in it does not mean it's magnesium. It is not. Ascorbates and ascorbic acid are vitamin C. Then you can take, if you get sick, so say you get sick with a virus, then I recommend you take vitamin C to bowel tolerance. What does that mean? It means you take a thousand milligrams of vitamin C 
every half an hour until you get diarrhea. And then when you get diarrhea, you back off and that's your own personal dose of vitamin C when you're sick. For some people when they're sick, that bowel tolerance dose could be 15,000. So 15, 1,000 milligram capsules before they get diarrhea. And then you back off of that. And this will just knock out these viruses and it works time and time again. So the first dose that we take every day just to pre prevent conditions is a thousand milligrams three times a day. If you actually get sick, that's when you ramp up your vitamin C until bowel tolerance. And bowel tolerance means when you get diarrhea, back off because that's when you've got your own personal dose of vitamin C figured out. You've heard probably about a flavonoid called quercetin. This particular supplement has so many double blind placebo controlled clinical trials that I stopped, I stopped listing them because I could just go on and on and on. Um, but when we're looking at how the immune system works, it works to inhibit overactive inflammation. It's being researched right now in a human clinical trial for SARS COVID. It improves your gut microbiome. So when you take quercetin, which is a flavonoid, it actually makes your gut work better. And remember your immune system, 70% of it sits in your gut. It makes your microbiome happier. And they all, all those good guys start talking to your immune system and it controls systemic inflammation in the body. So that's inflammation that's everywhere. It lowers blood pressure in dosages over 500 milligrams a day for eight weeks. In women, and I like it when there are studies done in women because we are different than men. 500 milligrams per day for eight weeks improved rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. And they, these are double blind placebo controlled clinical trials. And so they are the gold standard. In women with PCOS, quercetin improved insulin and hormone profiles. It makes your big eating macrophage cells, you know, those ones I told you that if you eat a teaspoon of sugar, your macrophages don't work for five to six hours. It makes those much stronger and it is antiviral and inhibits the viruses from getting into the cell. And that's really what you want to do. You want to get those viruses kicked out of the cell so we don't get sick. And then vitamin D3, and I have been saying since the beginning of the pandemic that every night on the news, when they tell us how many people have COVID, they should tell people to take vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, and quercetin and Modicare every day. We should be taking these nutrients every day to get our immune system so that it is seeking, recognizing, and destroying viruses. So everyone needs vitamin D3. And if you are on the webinar and you're not taking vitamin D3, I would be very surprised. It works on both arms of your immune system. It works on helping you make antibodies. It decreases the ability of viruses to replicate. It's antimicrobial, meaning it fights microbes. It regulates both your inflammatory and anti-inflammatory pathways, messengers. It reduces cancers of the breast and colon. So if you have a family history of breast cancer or colon cancer, you should be on this every day and your kids should be on it too. And in COVID patients, it reduces this cytokine storm. So what are cytokines? These are immune messengers. And when you get COVID in your lungs, your immune system sends out this massive, massive inflammatory storm. It's actually that massive storm that is creating all the problems. And so we know that vitamin D3 works to control the cytokine storm. It makes your macrophages devour things like crazy. It makes them like Pac-Man cells and it increases glutathione. So how much do we take? In kids, they need a thousand IUs per day. In adults, Health Canada finally increased the adult dosage of vitamin D3 to 2,500 IUs a day. I go one step further. You should take 2,500 IUs a day in the summer 
And then in the winter in Canada, where we're all covered up, because remember, you only make vitamin D3 on your skin from sunshine. And we're not doing that in the winter. We need 5,000 IUs. And I, when I was getting ready for this talk, I was looking up the vitamin D3 studies for COVID and they were in the hospital giving massive doses of vitamin D3. You don't need to do that if you're trying to prevent and treat your immune system so that it works better. These dosages work quite well. So here's what I recommend. And if you wanna write this down, this would be my daily immune supplement program. And Modicare is for the whole family. It comes in capsules. It comes in chewable tablets. The tablets are xylitol and a yummy grape flavor, and it's a natural grape flavor. And so you have two options. They are both exactly the same dose. So three capsules per day, three chewable tablets. I mean, if your kids are littler, there's a lower dose on the chewable tablet um, bottle. I would get a multivitamin that contains zinc selenium and magnesium because they're so important for the immune system. Uh, vitamin D3, everyone on this webinar is taking vitamin D3 because it is so essential, especially if you live in Canada. So kids need a thousand IUs a day and adults 2,500 to 5,000 IUs. Vitamin C for adults is 3,000 milligrams a day and I would do it a thousand milligrams times three or to bowel tolerance if you get sick. And some people love vitamin C so much, they do that bowel tolerance dose all the time. With quercetin, you do 250 milligrams to 500 milligrams a day. And I like the phytosome quercetin because quercetin is very hard to absorb. And so when it's in this phytosome form, they've done some really good research with it. It's much better absorbed. And I'm taking quercetin because it keeps your blood pressure in check. And in women, a lot of us start getting elevated blood pressure, even though we're fit and strong, it's probably because we're not sleeping properly. And so that's the one that I take is the phytosome quercetin. Uh, eat prebiotic vegetables, fermented foods, and probiotics, and eat lots of them. So my favorite probiotic is BioK. I buy it in little tubs, and I drink that. I do a seven-day treatment of BioK every month. I love fermented vegetables. I eat kimchi, I eat um, kombucha drinks, but I buy the kombucha drink that has no sugar in it. So make sure you read the label, otherwise you're counterproductive. And prebiotics that are found in things like blueberries and guar fiber, things that are just awesome prebiotics for the body. And Healthy Planet, who sponsored the talk today, is giving a discount of 15%, and that's on their whole website. And the code is Lorna15. And so if you buy $149 worth of products, you get the discount on everything that you buy. Make sure you go to my website at lornahealth.com and sign up for my online newsletter. And connect with me on social media. I'm really trying to build my social media following. And so if you go to Lorna Vanderhaeg, which is my name on Facebook and Instagram and like it, follow it, and do all those things, you get to hear about what I'm doing. And then Modicare has a great website as well at modicare.com if you wanna go read more research. Oh yes, and you're absolutely right. Danny said, don't forget to take vitamin K2 when you take vitamin D3 and that is so true. But here's the thing, if you eat a lot of vegetables and you eat fermented foods, guess what? You make vitamin K2. So that would be kind of exciting as well. And um, I'm gonna answer questions for you all now. I could talk about the immune system for days. So I'm gonna look and see what I can answer that uh, Rihanna hasn't been able. To. Yes, you can take these nutrients with thyroid medications. Actually, here is my recommendation about nutrients and any kind of drug, except for blood thinners. So let me be really clear. If you are on blood thinners, you are not supposed to change the vegetables you eat. You are not to um, 
change the nutrients you take. Like it's the blood thinners are probably the one drug that I recommend people do not mix other things with. But if you're on any other medications, you want to take your medications two to three hours apart from your supplements. And so with your thyroid medication, you're supposed to take it first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. And then you take your nutrients later. So I'm going to see what kind of questions we have here, if there's anything. How about using colostrum? Oh, I love colostrum. There's other immune supplements as well. I tried to pick the immune supplements that are going to make the biggest impact on your immune system and that are affordable and clinically researched. So colostrum is good. Absolutely. I mean, colostrum is from cows and colostrum is the first milk that moms get, give to their babies when they're breastfeeding. And I'm a big fan of breastfeeding. So if anyone is on the, the webinar tonight and having a hard time breastfeeding, please send me a uh, a question through one of the social media sites or the website at lornahealth.com. And, oh yeah, sugar. There, there are, I did a post on sugar. So there are so many hidden sugars and everything. And unfortunately in the research, even honey caused the macrophages of the immune system to be reduced. So, you know, a little bit of sugar is good, a lot is not so good. And if you're fighting a cold, whatever you do, don't drink a whole bunch of fruit juice because you've just caused your immune system to go to sleep. And that's literally what it does is go to sleep. And if you've got a kid that's sick, you probably don't want to use a lot of sugar. And that leads me to a lot of the kids supplements are full of sugar. And a lot of them are full of sugar and they actually don't even have enough nutrients in them to really help kids. And as many of you know, my daughter started a nutritional supplement company for children. And it's important that we have good quality nutrients for our kids. Is it safe to take methotrexate while you are on Modicure? Absolutely. And I recommend if you're on Humira, methotrexate, um, Plaquenil, any of those immunosuppressive drugs that you also take Modicare. Modicare is not gonna make your immunosuppressive drug not work. The only people who cannot take Modicare are people who've had organ transplants. If you've got a kid, new kidney, then you're not going to take Modicare because we wanna make sure that your anti-rejection drugs keep your immune system silenced. But otherwise you can absolutely take it. Uh, does menopause affect your immune system? You're causing autoimmune conditions? Absolutely. One of the things they found is when women go through menopause, their progesterone levels decline. And progesterone is a modifying, you know, calming kind of hormone. And so when your progesterone declines, your cortisol goes up. And then when your cortisol goes up, your DHEA drops. And DHA is your mother hormone. It's what all your male and female hormones are made from. So yes, when women go through menopause, they tend to get a lot more joint pain and increase in autoimmune conditions and increase in breast cancer and other cancers as well. So it's important that we protect this body and get that immune system doing its job um, every day. And so if you're in menopause, you want to add Modicare to your program for all of those reasons and a little bit of progesterone. So for postmenopausal or menopausal women who no longer have periods, um, I love Prometrium and you can get a low dose of it and give it a try. Uh, you take it at bedtime because it makes you really sleepy. It's a prescription drug, but Prometrium is natural bioidentical progesterone and you can get it from your doctor and a lot of medical plans, um, extended health benefits cover it as well. How much B12 for seniors? Well, first off, every senior should be taking a really good multivitamin with minerals. And I'm not talking about the one a days, one a day multivitamins that you buy in a pharmacy. You want a really good multivitamin with minerals and every single multivitamin with minerals will have B12 in it. And that's good enough. And then eat lots of vegetables, fermented foods. Every day I have a teaspoon of either kimchi or sauerkraut. 
and I do my bio K little pots for seven days every month to get that gut going. And hey, here's another thing. If you have a lot of gas and bloating and you've got this big distended belly, you have an immune problem. Your 70% of your immune system is in your gut. So let's get that gut working properly. Let's focus on it and really improve the good guys in your digestive tract. If you have eczema or psoriasis on your skin, that is your immune system telling you that the good guys on your skin are being downregulated from the bad guys. So you got too many bad guys against the good guys. And all of this sanitizer and bleach were killing our microbiome. Just use regular soap and water. You know, we don't need to be chemically destroying every bug out there because we're killing the good guys and we need the good guys. They fight the bad guys. There, there's a war going on with bacteria around us all the time. Oh, are these vitamins safe with tamoxifen? Absolutely. And if you're on tamoxifen, you should also be taking indole 3 carbonyl which is another amazing uh, plant nutrient that controls the bad estrogens that are linked to breast cancers. Oh, K2. Well, remember, vitamin K1 is a blood thinner. Vitamin K2 is not. So vitamin K2 has a completely different action in the body. And if I was on blood thinners, what would I do? I would not take the supplement, but what I would be doing is eating a lot of vegetables. And what is a lot? Five cups of vegetables a day is what we are supposed to be eating. And so start trying to do that. Uh, you can, or, or five cups of fruits and vegetables combined. And, you know, if you look at a big fat apple, that's, you know, three quarters of a cup. So it's really not that hard to do. And I would eat things like fermented foods and fruits and vegetables to get my vitamin K2 if I was on blood thinners. And better yet, you know, let's get our cardiovascular system working well with fish oils and great food because food is truly our medicine and can do some amazing things for us. If you have liver issues, I would need to know more. What kind of liver issue do you have? Do you have fatty liver? Do you have alcoholic liver disease? Do you have a liver that's suffering because it's been you know, bombarded with some kind of drug? So we, for people with liver issues, I am a big fan of NAC or glutathione. Those are the two you know, wonder supplements to get our liver working properly. And then you're gonna eat bitter foods like arugula and more cruciferous vegetables and drink dandelion tea and things that are gonna get your liver working properly. High blood pressure. Okay, so I developed high blood pressure and found out that it's because I don't drink any water. I get so busy working that I forget and I kind of like coffee in the morning instead of water. So drink lots of water. If you're a woman and you have high blood pressure, you want to take, well, I, I would take a thousand milligrams a day of quercetin. I would do 500 milligrams of magnesium bisglycinate. Uh, I would increase my fish consumption and fatty acids, but drink lots of water, sleep, because if you're not sleeping, then you have elevated blood pressure, especially in women. Do I have a collagen without stevia? Um, people probably know that I sold my company to Jameson Wellness. So this, the collagen product that's on the market, there are, there are three. Okay, the collagen capsules, you could take those because they have no stevia in them. The raspberry flavored collagen does have a little bit of stevia. The plain one does not. So there are three options. So take the capsules. Those are the ones I like anyways because they're much more potent than the uh, powdered version as well. Manuka honey, Manuka honey actually has quite good research. It does still slow your macrophages down, but because it has all these antibacterial agents, it kind of balances all out. And, uh, you know, I noticed that Costco sells these gigantic containers of Manuka honey for a, a really good price. Can gingivitis be cured by taking daily immune supplements and eating fermented foods? Absolutely. And get yourself a water pick 
and use natural toothpaste. It's so important. Do not use the mouthwashes that have all the chemicals and the coloring and the alcohol. You know, get yourself a tea tree oil based mouthwash, some good toothpaste, uh, drink a lot of water, um, eat xylitol because it is, chew xylitol. It's very good for your mouth and the microbiome in your mouth. And so you might want to get the chewable modicures because then you get a double benefit and use your water pick twice a day. Yeah, you can take supplements when you're in a fast. Absolutely. And um, can you take Magicare in a minimal dose? Um, no. Magicare has been, when, when there is clinical research in humans, you want to take the dose that was in the research. And the dose they have tested over and over again is three capsules a day. If you do less than that, you're wasting your money. And so you absolutely should always take the dose on the bottle that they tell you. You don't necessarily have to take more. A lot of people take more of things, you don't. The dose for Modicare is on the bottle. Um, methotrexate, absolutely. You should be taking Modicare if you're on methotrexate. Can I recommend a water purifier? Oh my goodness. Well, you know, part of the thing with the water purifiers is you making sure that you're constantly changing the filter that's what you really want to be doing. And what is a good treatment for menopause symptoms while on tamoxifen? If you want to private message me on that, because that's a long answer. And um, if you're getting itchy while you're exercising and you take allergy medicine, yeah, you want to go on Magicare and quercetin. Do this little immune program and you try it for three months it's the perfect time to do it. You know, we're heading into the winter when colds and flus and viruses ramp themselves up. Uh, you want to do it now. So start now and see what happens. Cause I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Yes, you can take Modicare while you're on chemotherapy. Do not take it at the same moment. So, you know, again, several hours apart is important. Uh, we are definitely recording it. I heard some people had a problem with the sound. And so we'll be listening to the recording. If there's a problem with the sound, I will re-record it, but it, it will be sent out to you. So if you sign up for my newsletter, I'll make sure that you get a copy of it. Remember that Healthy Planet has a discount code. If you buy $150, you get the 15% on everything. So if there's some, and please connect with me on social media. And again, I'm really sorry that we had the glitch at the beginning and couldn't get the webinar launched. I apologize for that. So thank you very much, everybody. Connect with me on social media. Every couple of weeks, I do a free question. I know come and do your questions on social media and I am there for you, so please do so. Take care, everybody, and have a good night. And thanks to Rihanna for helping me answer questions.